Hey everybody, and good Wednesday evening. It's time for Weather for Weather Geeks, the Valley's most in-depth and de detailed and geeky weather forecast. We're in the middle of a very quiet stretch of weather. This will, of course, eventually change, but even in quiet weather patterns, we like to find some interesting things to talk about. And one of the things I've been asked a few times uh, lately is, hey, when's the last time we had a mostly sunny day? It's been a little while. Uh, this uh, graphic shows December. We've been cloudy all of January. Let's go back to December, though. And the uh, dates are along the uh, bottom here. Here's a look at the dates down here. Uh, the more blue you see, the more sunshine we had. And, and really, I, I think gathering from this data, the last time we can say we had just a, a mostly sunny day was probably, it looks like, December 11th, or around the 11th anyway. Ever since then, we had some days that featured some sun, but a lot, a lot of clouds over the last few weeks. I've been talking about this all week long. It's, you know, not all that unusual to have a long cloudy stretch during the cloudiest time of the year, uh, which is December and January. But uh, this year it seems especially dark and gloomy here in the kind of the first half of meteorological winter. All right, uh, the Great Lakes are pretty much still wide open for business. Very little ice cover. In fact, just 2% ice coverage on the Great Lakes. And that includes Lake Erie, which, of course, is the most shallow Great Lake and the one that tends to freeze up the uh, soonest. And just some real, real thin patches of ice on the northern end of Lake Erie. More pronounced uh, ice uh, in a very shallow part of Lake Huron, up towards uh, what's called the uh, the Thumb of Michigan. Uh, if you, you know, Michigan kind of looks like a mitten or... Or uh, uh, this is the kind of the thumb of that mitten, the eastern end of it, uh, and that's an area where you typically see ice first in the winter season because it is so shallow. But as far as the, you know, the the all the lakes combined, Erie is easily the most uh, shallow Great Lake, with Ontario being the deepest in the last to ever freeze over. All right, not much going on this evening across the region. We had a couple of. Oh, areas of mist and flurries earlier on. Those have since faded away. We had uh, had to flip on the wipers a couple of times earlier this afternoon. Temperatures are not bad, and there's not much of a winter weather threat in northern latitudes over the next uh, few days. We do have a system that'll bring some accumulating snow to parts of the south, so winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings are up around the, the Ozarks in Arkansas and Missouri. Also, winter storm watches are up for the western Carolinas, which are going to do quite well with some snow coming up late this week. All right, there's a lack of cold air on the playing field. That is for sure. Where's the cold? Well, let's go to the other side of the uh, pole and over in Siberia in Russia. Uh, this is where the, the meat of the cold is in the northern hemisphere. It's locked up here for now. This is going to start to be unlocked a little bit and start uh, coming across the pole, coming across the Arctic Ocean as we get into the second half of January. But for now, they're kind of hogging all the extreme cold on the other side of the pole. It was a whole different story, though, seven years ago, as a lobe of the polar vortex definitely descended through North America and brought us some record cold. Kind of an unusual day back on this day on the 6th of January in 2014. We started the day around midnight in the 40s, but by 11 p.m. that evening, we established a record low for the date, 11 below, and it was uh, what we call, uh, I like to call a daily double, if you will, because we set the record low for today's date almost at the last minute in the evening, and then as the calendar flipped to the next day, a new record low was established on the 7th. It got down to 12 below uh, just after midnight on the 7th. So we had two record lows within a few hours of each other. A very, very harsh cold snap back in that very nasty winter of 2013-2014. All right, nothing nasty over the next couple of days. Clouds will try to thin some tomorrow afternoon if we get lucky, kind of like we did on a few spots earlier this afternoon. We might see some breaks of sun. The storm is going to be a uh, mist to the south for us. Some sunny breaks by the end of Friday, but finally more appreciable sunshine heading our way for the weekend. Again, the ski resorts in the south will do pretty well out of this. Half a foot or more, far eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina. But around the Great Lakes, where you'd expect plentiful snow in the middle of winter, not much at all to be found in the coming days. If you've been paying attention to my longer-range thoughts lately, I've been talking about this pattern change. As we head towards the second half of next week, you're going to see the jet stream buckle in those kind of deeper purples coming down, and that means some very cold air aloft coming down at the end of next week into the following weekend. Now, do I think it's really harshly cold? No. In fact, uh, late next week into next weekend, it may be just kind of in the upper 20s, which is kind of par for the course in mid-January. Um, beyond that, it probably looks a little bit colder beyond the 20th. And as far as wintry weather is concerned, in this kind of a jet stream configuration and the kind we expect beyond 
late next week, and again beyond like the 18th, 19th, 20th, increasing chances, I think, for some uh, wintry precipitation. When we look up at the 5,000 foot level, this is a good level to look at for intensity of cold air masses. And this is kind of what I mean. This is the end of next week into next weekend. So this is Saturday, the, what would that be, the 16th? And at 5,000 feet in our really cold air masses, you're going to see temperatures way down here in, the, in like the coldest air masses. We don't see anything like that coming yet by the end of next weekend. Beyond that, though, uh, there's a chance that uh, the air mass does turn colder. So you know, you kind of see that reflected in the 8 to 14 day outlook by the uh, Climate Prediction Center. You don't see a lot of deep blues on this map, right? You also don't see a lot of reds in the eastern U.S. It's going to be, a, uh, at the very least, a seasonably cold pattern evolving towards the end of next week into the following weekend. Uh, what happens beyond that? Uh, lower confidence, although uh, I would say higher than average confidence when we're talking about two weeks into the future. Usually our confidence on details two weeks, three weeks into the future is pretty low, I would say, in this kind of a situation where we have pretty good model agreement, I would say confidence is higher than usual that we're going to see a pretty cold looking pattern during the last 10 days of the month. Not much of a signal here on the 8 to 14 day outlook precipitation wise, but again, at the very end of this uh, period, the kind of the days 13, 14 and beyond, I think we're going to see plenty of opportunities for all kinds of wintry mischief in the eastern U.S. That'll do it for me tonight. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. Have a good rest of your Wednesday night, and I'll see you back here same time, same place on Thursday.